I mean, holy fuck. <laughs> this, this video I'm about to do right now, it's in regards to the reaction or even the, the narrative that had been created by the central planners and the cartel. Those who, actually, it's not even really the cartel. The cartel is kind of sticking to their guns predominantly. It's the, uh, the idiots in the media or those investors or the politicians that keep trying to, I mean, they're, they're conveying and portraying their own mentality on the people by trying to almost like they're begging and pleading for the OPEC to fucking <laughs> come together and manipulate uh, the price of oil upwards so that cronyism can flourish once again. Woohoo! But I mean, come on. Even with this whole bullshit yesterday and, and we seen the oil, the price of barrel, for, price of oil per barrel went up by 6% yesterday based on this speculation that the OPEC countries have come together to create a, a, a ceiling and or a production freeze in their capacity. Meanwhile, <laughs> the same day, Russia comes out basically saying that, hey, we're on schedule to ramp up and uh, increase our output <laughs> to offset and a decrease by the OPEC nations. So, and I mean, think about it, Canada, the US, Venezuela, Nigeria, well, you think these countries are just going to say, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll stay not producing. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, we're going to allow people to fucking manipulate our ability to be able to provide for, you know, our own tax farm or tax slave of choice, right? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're not, the, the old way of doing things, like I said, they got away with it prior to the information age before people were actually yeah, had or before people actually had the capacity to understand what's going on we all now have the capacity and i think most people actually understand what is truly going on when it comes to you know the price fixing and manipulation of not just currencies but oil and other commodities it's so people have realized so no matter how many times they come out with article after article or or, or propaganda trying to espouse the bullshit rhetoric that Oh, we're going to bring oil prices back up over a hundred or whatever dollars. You know, it's it's just not going to happen because the OPEC producers lost a huge chunk of the market share by going along to get along. They realized, yeah, going along. <laughs> they, hey, look at that. Hmm. Central planners are learning. Even regular people are learning. So people are getting smarter. Even in this, let's, <laughs> everyone's still walking in the fog because central planning, you know, completely misconstrues and and uh, um, prevents people from seeing things clearly. But even when you can't see things clearly, you might not know which way to go or which way, to, what, what direction to travel. But if you know that things are foggy, you're at least going to slow down and bear, be very much more apprehensive and cautious in every move you make. That's that's the counteract, the counterbalance to central planners is no matter what they try to do and they think that they can manipulate people to do certain things, people instinctively are going to do what they do regardless of what central planners hope that they'll do. Maybe some people would say, well, yeah, but that's what's the whole point of central planners is they're, they do that, it's that reverse psychology, but even then, once you've done that a couple times, two, three times, people realize, oh, they're using reverse psychology. So they'll, there's just no way to put your thumb on the people and expect that they're going to stay underneath of it. Very slippery folks there. Oil price slips as markets question whether OPEC deal is too good to be true. Of course it's too good to be true. That's why oil place, prices are slipping again. But think about it, even when it's slipping, the people that sold... The ones that are going to buy from the sellers at a lower price, they'll just hold on that for a little bit and then they'll do the same thing and then somebody else will make money off of them. Or It's just a constant. There's no real good, um, well, there's no real genuine economic benefits for, for the masses other than a very small minority of people that get to keep game in the system. But for the overall economies or the world as, a, you know, in the macro aspect, <laughs> It's just, it's pure negativity. There's nothing good that's coming as a result of this. I mean, 
We look around today and oil prices are in the mid 40s. We should only be paying for gas prices at the pump 50, 55 cents a liter at best. Even that I don't believe. But if we even go back to to the old uh, way they used to measure things and how that correlation used to happen properly, even though even that, even that I believe was even inflated and manipulated to a certain degree, we can't even get back to that level. Because inflation, you know, central planning, governments and, and, and cartels are destroying natural incentives and natural market reactions and fundamentals. That's really what we're talking about. Nothing is happening properly, so nobody can, even the price mechanism, that's been destroyed. Well, I mean a cartel, you can't have a proper price mechanism when you have cartels. So it's just, it's only going to continue to get worse. They think it's going to get better, but they should know, hey, you started that, you buttered up the fucking slide and threw a bunch of people on it, and you think they're going to be able to climb to the top? No. That butter's making them fucking, they're going to slide to the bottom no matter how much. You, they can run. They can try to stick to the side. They can try to hold on for dear life, but they're still going to continue to slide down there. You can't change. You can't reverse course at this stage of the game. Nice try. E for effort. F for fail. Oil prices slipped today as investors question whether an OPEC Agreement to curb oil production, the group's first such deal since 2008, would be enough to rebalance a heavily oversupplied world market. That's another thing. It's already so massively oversupplied. But, so even if you froze output, if you freeze output at a massively oversupplied amount, what's it really doing? Not much, right? The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries agreed on Wednesday to cut output to 32.5 to 33 million barrels per day. From around 33.5 million barrels per day estimated by Reuters to be to to be the output level in August. Oil prices rose sharply on the news and energy shares rallied in early trading on Thursday. The European oil and gas index soared nearly 5%, while the pan-European stock 600 index was up 3%. But I mean, even if they decide that they're going to freeze at 33 million barrels a day, and from the high of 33.5, so 500,000, half a million barrels per day, you don't think other countries are going around the world are going to be like, oh, really? You're cutting yourself by 500,000? Well, we'll ramp it up even more. We'll, we'll take up the slack. Of course, someone's always going to be looking for bigger market share, even if they might, you know, not be making huge or generate huge amounts of profits in the interim. They realize that market share is market share. They want that. Competition. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Even with central planning and all this shit that happens... All these things really do is show that natural forces, like gravity, competition is always going <laughs> to elicit the same reaction and result. Oil prices rose sharply on the news and energy shares rallied in early trading on Thursday. The European Oil and Gas Index... Oh, okay, never mind. I've read that already. Um, but oil... I, but oil prices retreated as skepticism over the deal led to profit taking. Yeah, see? See? And you know what? I haven't even read this article prior. I probably should because it make it would probably make my videos more seamless, more you know streamlined. But I don't. I like to be just as shocked and and deal with things on the fly as a lot of people do. I guess I I, pfft, I don't know. I don't like scripted narratives. I just I've never been a fan of that. I won't conform. <laughs> I do things my way. <laughs> Global benchmark Brent crude oil was down 60 cents a barrel at US $48.09 by 08.50, 8.50 in the morning. After early climbing to a high of US 49.09, it's strongest since September 9th. Brent settled up US $2.72 a barrel or 5.9% on Wednesday. US light crude oil was down 30 cents at US 46.75 a barrel after first hitting US 47.47 in its highest since September 8th. W2I rose US $2.38 or 5.3% on Wednesday. All these numbers, blah, 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 blah. While the initial response to the argument was positive, there are crucial questions to be answered by the organization in the coming weeks, said Tomas Viagra, or Varga, Viagra, <laughs> oil analysts at London brokerage PVM Oil Associates. US Bank Goldman Sachs said it expected the OPEC deal to add U.S. $7 to U.S. $10 to oil price in the first half of next year. But many analysts said they were concerned that too many details have been left unresolved and that the deal could unravel. How much each country will produce is to be decided at the next formal OPEC meeting in November, when an invitation to join cuts could also be extended to non-OPEC countries such as Russia. 
<laughs> which Russia already said. Not going to net. They're ramping up production. So, yeah, right? Even whether they do or don't, that's the other thing, too, is like think of the waste of all this bullshit. What if people just, what if oil and shit was just produced by natural demand? I mean, and prices reflect the natural. Think about how much simpler things would be. Think about how much more productive and how much increased productivity and the reduction in waste that would happen if things were done properly without central planners, central banks, or collectivism or cartels. It is not clear when the agreement would come into effect, how compliance with the agreement will be verified, what new individual quotas for countries would be, and how long the deal would remain in effect, an analysis. Analysts said, and a cut in OPEC production might do little to reduce oversupply given uncertainty about output from Iran, Libya, and Nigeria. And like I said, you got Venezuela, you got Canada, you got US, it's got all. I mean, they can ramp up production quickly, especially the Seychelles producers. So the problems of surpluses will not be solved if these countries take full advantage of their capacities. Commerce Bank Chief Commodities Analyst, analyst Eugene Weinberg said. So yeah, Thomson Reuters 2016. So once again, uh, when I post this video, as per usual, I'll paste a link to this article in the description. You can go read it yourself. But yeah, if you think for one minute that, that the oil producers of the world, which is, and the ones that are the main oil producers in the world, that's that's their, that's the gravy train. If you think they're going to try to slow down the gravy train or, or, or knock off a few cars or shoot themselves in the foot, Yeah, it won't happen. Hope and pray. Wishes you may. Wishes you might. But that's not what's going to play out. Not in this modern world. Not the, not in the situation that we are currently living under. Where everybody's so massively indebted. Running high deficits. Broke. Well, I mean, not everyone. Russia and some of these uh, Middle Eastern countries aren't nearly as indebted. But because their resource extraction and commodities are what keep their populations more domicile, right? More more obedient and conformist. They're not going to fucking destroy their wealth, their incentives. Because they know what the reaction, what the consequences and ramification may, the potential might be. Skidday, libertarian. And I love liberty.